I think today very few people are unaware that this beautiful planet Saturn has these amazing rings orbiting around it. But what most people don't realize is how these actual rings were formed and that uh, many other planets, including Jupiter, actually have these rings. And specifically what most people don't realize is that it's actually possible for any object, for any planet in our solar system to have rings, including our planet Earth. Now, what makes these rings and how are they formed and what is the math behind it is today's topic. And so today we're going to be discussing something called the Roche Limit. This is the mathematical formula for how to calculate where and when can the rings be formed around a certain planet. Welcome to What the Math. And if I actually try to come really, really close or inside of these rings, you'll notice that they are basically made up of these tiny particles, tiny particles that are orbiting really, really, really fast around Saturn. Uh, now, this is Saturn. Let's actually take a look at uh, the other gas giants and see what they have before talking a little bit more about what's going on here and how it's all calculated and uh, how you can actually find out where uh, the rings would be formed around our planet Earth. So we're gonna fly into the rings of Saturn and go to the next planet, which is of course Jupiter. And voila, this is Jupiter and look at that, there's rings here as well. So this gas giant also has rings and they're uh, maybe not as big as the rings of Saturn, but they're definitely there and they definitely have the same kind of a flow to them. Look at that, they're just flying around um, beautiful Jupiter orbiting around it in peace. Now, all right, so that's uh, that's two. Let's see what if other gas giants have it as well. Now, I'm not going in order here, but this is Neptune, and you can see that there's actually a tiny, tiny ring around Neptune as well. It's really, really hard to see, but there it is. There is the ring of Neptune. All right, so Neptune seems to have the rings as well. How about Uranus? And this is Uranus, and you can see it also has the rings. I don't know if you can, see, if you can kind of tell that they're there, but here we go, I'm gonna come closer to them. And look at that. So there's also rings here. So what is happening here? How are these things formed? Well, first thing you have to try to understand is how are the actual objects that are not rings formed? So for example, let's actually take a look at the nearest um, uh, moon here, the nearest satellite of Neptune. Let's try to find something. There, there's something right there. Look at that. This is a dwarf moon called uh, Aphelia. We're going to come to closer to it. I'm going to take a look at it. And so this is Ophelia. All right, so Ophelia is basically a rock, but it's not just a rock. It's actually a collection of tiny, tiny rocks that were um, attracted to each other through their own gravity and basically came together into one big chunk. Now, they're not actually very, very solid. Um, you can possibly actually even like punch through them. You could, you know, kick through them and your, your hand or your... Uh, foot would actually probably go through this um, object because they're oh, oh this is so gross oh my god this is this is just disgusting <laughs> this is giving me shivers uh, let's go on the other side the other side was a little bit more attractive uh, so yeah so here the actual rock is uh, it's not very hard uh, and that's because the, uh, Ophelia and many other objects specifically comets actually comets and asteroids they're basically a collection of rocks that are sort of joined together um, using their own gravity um, and you can kind of take it apart. Uh, the more, the bigger the object, the more um, solidly it is packed. And uh, very large planets would obviously be more dense and be more highly um, compact. Like for example, our planet Earth. It's it's much harder than all of these objects. But so. Why is this important? Well, because if you were actually to take Aphelia and you were to move it closer to um, Uranus, if you were to actually approach it and put it right here, orbiting much closer than it is right now, the gravity from Uranus would actually be stronger than the gravity inside Aphelia. And so all of those tiny rocks that Aphelia is made up of would actually slowly fly away from it and would uh, most likely either, you know, crash into um, Uranus or create the ring. Now, this is essentially how the rings were formed. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of mathematics and we're going to go to Universe Sandbox 2 because it does allow us to see uh, some of the details of these planets. And so here in Universe Sandbox 2, what I wanted to take a look at is, well, first of all, we're going to take a look at all of these planets and their rings as well. But actually, let's start with this simulation called, um, where is it? Somewhere here. There it is. Uh, Shoemaker uh, Levi collides with Jupiter in 1994. Now, this is an actual event. I'm going to show you what happens here. Um, here comes a selection of particles, or I guess you can call them comets. And look at that. Boom, 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 boom. 
all of them smack into Jupiter. Now, this is kind of what happened. Okay, maybe it was a little bit faster than this, actually. Um, but um, in 1994, the scientists observed uh, the comet called Shoem uh, Shoemaker-Levi, I believe it was 9? Was that, was that the actual title? Um, I think it was 9. Um, uh, come close to Jupiter. Basically, here's the picture how it, how it actually happened. It approached Jupiter and it uh, approached it close enough that the gravity of Jupiter actually pulled the comet apart into tiny, tiny pieces. I believe there were 23 pieces in total. I may be wrong, but I think it was 23. Um, and all of these pieces then returned to Jupiter and, uh, and this is actually the orbit that it took uh, and then basically collided with it. Um, all of this was observed by the scientists and actually all of this was uh, recorded as well and photographed and you can actually find um, the actual footage of this happening and see, uh, see what happens to Jupiter when it actually, you know, when, when the actual comets, slow this down a little bit, when the actual comets actually crash into Jupiter. Let's follow one of them. Where, let's, let's follow Shoe, uh, Shoemaker Levi 9F. Uh, it's only five meters long. Um, so here we go. We're gonna smack into Jupiter and basically uh, the, the actual comet did fall apart uh, because it approached really closely and turned into many 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 sub, uh, objects. So when an object approaches any planet Okay, that wasn't as fun as I thought it would be. Um, when uh, any object approaches a big planet, it actually gets pull ap pulled apart by the planet's gravity. Now, this is what we call the Roche limit. There's actually um, a distance from the planet, a certain distance that you can calculate using the formula that I'm about to show you, uh, that allows you, uh, or that, um, not allows you, but it, it, that basically creates this field, not a field, but uh, area around the planet where anything um, that comes there will actually uh, tur be turned into little particles and possibly rings. So if I were to place, if I were to actually go here and place a, a moon um, uh, somewhere, I just say Europa, really, really close to Jupiter. Now, this is not unfortunately going to happen in this game, but if it was orbiting right here, Europa would actually fall apart into little particles, into little fragments, and uh, we're gonna see if we can simulate this by possibly exploding it. Let's see if we can actually explode it. Uh, no, nothing happened. Okay, well that's okay. Anyway, so the idea here is um, this would now actually become the rings. So it would actually turn into the rings uh, and would slowly uh, get uh, dispersed into little particles instead of being a one solid object. Uh, same would happen to Earth. Now let's take a look at Earth for a second. So here's a simulation called Earth and the Moon. Now the Moon um, is far enough from, from our planet Earth that it doesn't really get um, broken into particles. But if our Moon was a lot closer, and we're going to do that right now, we're going to place it relatively close at a distance uh, that is within the so-called Roche limit, which is actually right here, about 18,000 kilometers away from Earth. So if I were to place it a little bit closer right here, in reality, the moon would actually now um, become little particles and it would actually create this. It would create a ring around our planet Earth and it would be somewhat similar to what you see right here. It would be relatively close to Earth within uh, anywhere between 12,000 to 18,000 kilometers. And this would be actually the moon. It would probably be a little bit more than this actually. There we go, this is a little bit more solid, so it would be something like this. Um, and this would be the moon if it came close enough to Earth. Now, how do we actually calculate this uh, this distance and what does it actually depend on? So, there's uh, several factors here. First of all, well, and, and this is by the way, found, this was found in, um, I believe it was 1849 or be, uh, close to 1815 uh, by a French astronomer called Edouard Roche. And this is why it's called the Roche limit. And so he discovered that um, if an object is um, at a certain distance, and this distance is calculated with this formula right here, so it's approximately 2.4 multiplied by the radius of the larger objects, in this case the radius of Earth is right here, 6371, 6371 kilometers. Uh, and then all of this is multiplied by the ratio of the density of the larger object, and density is displayed right here, 5.51 grams per centimeter cube for Earth, and 3.34 grams per centimeter cube for, for the moon. And so you find the uh, ratio, so you divide uh, the bigger object by the smaller object, and then um, this number has to be, um, you have to t uh, take the power of 1 over 3, 
So what you get, what this number that you get uh, for Earth is approximately 18,000 kilometers. For Jupiter, it's obviously larger, but it's in comparison to Jupiter's size, it's not as big because Jupiter's density uh, that I'm about to show you, let's actually place Jupiter somewhere on the outskirts here so we can see its density. Here we go. Uh, Jupiter's density is much, much smaller. Here it's, it's actually um, 1.33. It's, it's about a four, one fourth of uh, density of Earth. And uh, basically, because of that, uh, and I think it's actually going to start approaching us very soon and possibly crash into us. Um, so because uh, Jupiter's density is much smaller and uh, a lot of its uh, moons have a higher density. So if I were to place Io, for example, where is this Io? Here it is. Um, Io has higher density. It's uh, almost double, actually. This is 1.33. And more than double, it's, this is 3.53. So because of uh, higher density, Io can actually be a little bit closer to Jupiter. So for Earth and the Moon, the Roche limit is something like 2.9 times the radius. So here, uh, if you multiply our radius by 2.9, you'll get about 18,000 kilometers. But for Jupiter, it's a lot less. It's, uh, it's closer to... Well, actually, let's try to calculate. Let's just, uh, for fun, let's try to calculate the Roche limit for Jupiter and Io. So what we need to do is we're going to take uh, the density of Jupiter, which is 1.33, divided by 353. Then we're going to find the cubic root of that. Multiply this by the radius of Jupiter, which is approximately 70,000 kilometers. And then finally multiply this by approximately 2.4. And the answer we'll get is something close to about 146 or 147,000 kilometers, which is only about uh, 2.1 the radius of uh, Jupiter. So in other words, uh, the Roche limit um, ratio here is much smaller than it is on, on Earth. And um, for Earth and Moon, it's, it's about 2.9, but for Earth and um, things like comets, which are actually much, much, much less dense. Uh, so like if I were to place a, a comet in here or an asteroid, oh, here you go, how, uh, Halley's Comet. Uh, for Halley's Comet, it's actually, uh, the Roche limit is uh, about almost six times the radius of Earth, so it's about here. So if uh, Halley's Comet is at this distance, it's, go it's going to fall apart, break apart, and, and turn into many, many pieces, which is actually what happens to many, many comets and many, many asteroids as they approached Earth and then crashed into it. So basically, when an um, asteroid or a comet approaches Earth and when it, you know, when it, uh, when it crashes into Earth, it doesn't crash as one whole chunk, as many people think, as many movies portray. It actually crashes as many pieces. It, it does fall apart into uh, essentially this, and then these rings, then uh, the, you know, they crash on Earth uh, one after another. And, oh, and speaking of crashing, I think something's about to happen. I definitely did not expect this to happen so soon, but here we go. We're going to have a bit of a collision here, and yep. All right, so that's that's all good, and, and uh, oh, look at this beautiful event happening. This is not what I expected or planned to do, but you know what? It happened, and that's okay. Anyway, so yeah, so this is what would happen to um, Earth, or sorry, to the moon if it was really close to Earth, and also why uh, certain planets and certain objects have... Um, rings and essentially what happens to many many objects um, as they approach uh, very very large bodies like Jupiter for example and come really close to them and this is why uh, many of these large objects actually have rings and how these rings were created. And I think this simulation right here called Saturn with rings actually does give you a really good idea of uh, what's really happening here. Uh, because if you look at this from, you know, from high up from the top here, you'll notice that everything within this limit is not an object, it's not an actual moon, not a satellite, it's, it's actually just a ring. But then right after it, you'll see that this is where a lot of the objects start forming. So right uh, here we have Atlas, then we have... Uh, Daphnis, uh, we have a bunch of other objects, I don't remember, remember their names, Epip Epimetheus, uh, all of these objects are formed um, past the Roche limit, and so everything within this radius is the Roche limit, and this is essentially where um, everything will, or most things will turn into fine particles and small rocks that will just be orbiting around Jupiter because its gravity is strong enough in this particular region that will, it will not allow for the objects to form into spherical bodies and to become planets or moons. 
But this is also the reason why one day uh, our planet can also acquire rings if something actually, uh, specifically an asteroid or a comet, passes by close enough but doesn't actually collide with our planet but passes by just close enough to get into orbit around our planet, it will very likely turn into rings and it will very likely become this as well and we might as well have these. So maybe one day this is what our planet will look like and this might be actually the future look of planet Earth. If this is what we're headed toward, this is actually pretty awesome because if you look into the sky, this is what you would see. You would see these beautiful rings and asteroids and beautiful rocks flying above you, uh, reflecting all kinds of light and creating all kinds of visual effects in the sky. And I think it would actually look pretty, pretty gorgeous. Anyway, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you learned something new today and hopefully you enjoyed it as well. And if you've enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. And don't forget to like and share this video. Thank you so much for watching. Check out some of the other Universe Unbox 2 videos I've posted and also take a look at the Space Engine videos as well because Space Engine is absolutely gorgeous and it's definitely worth the download because it's absolutely free. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye-bye.